When setting camp on a glacier, we have a few additional considerations compared to just camping on snow. Let's talk about some of them. Hello, I'm Jason. We are winding down our first iteration of our glacier travel series. We've dealt with roping up, crevasse rescues, movement, navigation, and belays across crevasses. There's a link in the description to check out all of this. Today though, we are taking our travel across the glacier to a resting spot for the night and setting camp. This isn't a winter camping video. We have other videos on things like making snow walls, cold weather sleep systems, and tips for staying warm. You can check out links to those videos as well. Rather, this video is about the handful of special considerations that come into play when we are camping on glaciers, with their crevasse danger in particular. Let's start with location. If our particular location allows a choice between camping just before a glacier or on the glacier, we may end up choosing the camp just before the glacier starts. Or, if you have an accessible moraine shoulder like they do at Everest Base Camp, that might make a good spot. This eliminates the crevasse danger, but it may increase our concern of avalanches and rockfall. Glaciers carve through mountains. That forms cliffs above. Those cliffs shed. So while an avalanche course is beyond the scope of this video, I would highly recommend checking out our Intro to Avalanche Education video. There is another link in the description which provides resources for finding certified and reputable avalanche courses all across the globe. The short version, though, is that we know avalanches are most likely on slopes of 30 to 45 degrees, and we also need to be on the lookout for things like seracs or rockfall from the cliff sides of the moraine itself. We want to be aware of fall lines, terrain on the slopes that will funnel these debris fall events into certain locations, and run out, how far towards the potential camp the debris keeps coming based on the height of the debris fall and therefore the energy it produces. For snow avalanches, backcountry skiers will consider the alpha angle, or the angle from your location to the top of the likely origin of the avalanche. The lower the angle, the farther you are from the avalanche source. How tightly or loosely bonded the snow is impacts the safe zone, but if you can get an alpha angle of 17 to 15 degrees or less, you will typically be safe. You measure this by eyeing the potential avalanche crown and measuring using the clinometer on your compass, a device I highly recommend having for not only this use, but in case of a whiteout condition or GPS interference or dead batteries. Rockfall typically doesn't go as far with larger alpha angles more acceptable. We also should look for visual evidence of potential runout. Where do we see rock debris? Do we see avalanche cones or other debris evidence? But like anything, there are exceptions to rules. The earthquake-induced avalanche that demolished whole sections of Everest Base Camp in 2015 included a massive serac falling so far and with such force that it actually created a shockwave of air, snow, and debris that might be more akin to the concussion of a bomb exploding than anything else. We should only use these alpha angles and debris observations as data points, not fail-safes. But sometimes we just have to be on the glacier. Maybe it's those angles and debris risks that move us out into the middle. Maybe we're just so high, glacier is the only option. If we do intend to camp on the glacier proper, we need to probe the campsite and eventually leave the site in ways that better ensure safety. Going back to our video on glacier navigation, yet another link in the description, we are looking for compression zones where the glacier isn't turning or stretching much. Then, as we approach a potential site, we want to establish a safe zone perimeter. We will want to keep ropes taut between teammates in case an unseen crevasse results in a fall, so we can designate a pivot point and then probe in a circle around that point. An avalanche probe is ideal for this, and we want to probe with arms extended so our feet aren't over a point we have yet to determine is safe. Once we have a perimeter set, we need to probe inside that perimeter by having the prober move in while the rope slack is taken in as well. If, at any point, we feel the air that signifies the crevasse, we want to mark it and then establish a new circle perimeter someplace else. Eventually, we can mark the perimeter of the safe zone with wands, equipment, or snow blocks that we may eventually turn into snow walls. 
If we have teammates that are outside the perimeter, we want to belay them into the safe zone so that the rope is always tight until the safe area is reached. And similarly, when it is time for the team to leave the safe zone, we will want to belay each climber out until the rope comes tight to the next climber and we have established normal spacing between all the climbers. Have a favorite glacier campsite you've experienced? Tell us where in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can check out our Rope Team Fundamentals video for glacier travel, or you can check out our entire glacier travel series. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.